Last night's 120 to 95 win was the 19th win of at least 25 points by the Ooh. Celtics since the start of the regular season. That sets a new NBA record. It also happened to be their second straight win of 25 plus points as they closed out round one against the Heat with a 118 84 win last week. All right, Chris, uh, let's just jump right into Forsberg's four here and talk about the, the four things that you liked most uh, about last night. Yeah, the hardest part was picking only four things that I liked because there was so much to choose from there. As you said, it's incredible just how dominant they've been in the wins this postseason. But we start number one with the way Jalen Brown has been the tone setter throughout this season, throughout the postseason. I mean, multiple seasons at this point, 15 of his 32 points out of the gates whenever you need someone to light that fuse. But here's the thing, Giles, didn't really extinguish at any point either. I think my favorite part was that even as he got the offense going, there's this natural tendency, right? Like, you got to sacrifice one to get the other, right? No. Jalen brought it on the defensive end as well. Cavs shooters were 4 of 14 shooting when defended by Jalen Brown in this game, including Donovan Mitchell, 1 of 4. Four points because he got filed once, but Jalen had that block in the third quarter, and it felt the game, like the game was never close after that point. Uh, he's, <laughs> you talk about the tone setter. It, the 15 points right out of the, the – uh, right off the jump there in the first mm. quarter. And then he had like a mini 4 nothing run there in the third – it was either late third or early fourth yep. quarter when it felt like if Cleveland was going to come back in it. No now Jalen right. Brown just took right, uh, care of that right there. All right, what do you got for number two? Number two, we're going with Peyton Pritchard, buzzer beater. Mm. No one loves the heave or late clock situation more than Peyton Pritchard. I was looking it up today because I was like, this feels irrational. Like, he's had a lot of these this year, right? Yes. I think it's 38 shots in the final three seconds of a quarter this year, including, I think, 22 at the buzzer. And he had one last night, same deal. When you feel like you need just a little jolt of momentum, a little something to just kind of squash that opponent, there's Peyton throwing one in. He was joking. He said he had missed a couple bunnies early. He was a little frustrated with himself. But you could tell he got the ball. I think it was like four seconds on the clock. He was like, this one's going up. Didn't even look at Tatum. I'm going to make this one. All of a sudden, the Celtics have an extra infusion of energy. And I love this. He's not worried about his field goal percentage. He's already got that contract extension. You don't have to be worried about your numbers right now. It's all about making good things happen. And every time Peyton Pritchard, the NBA leader, uh, or one of the net leaders in net rating along with Sam Hauser, makes good things happen. That was, I think, also the loudest pop at the Garden yeah, last night, too. I mean, fair, that, right? that, got everyone, that got everyone going right there as uh, gave him a 15-point lead going into the fourth quarter. What do we got for number three? Number three, Derek White, three-point maker, right? Like, this is what he does now. I think the number now is 26 three-pointers through the first six playoff games of this uh, postseason, more than any other player in Celtics history in a uh, six-game span. I didn't know if I, you know, we all know how good Derek White is, right? And you hear J Jalen at times joking about, if, if you don't know around the, the national media, well, you better figure it out quick. But I didn't know he was going to turn into Steph Curry this postseason. Mm. Just making three. I mean, he's getting fancy with it now, John. He's got 20 over the last three games. Jeez Louise. Yeah. 20 over the last three games, which, he, which puts him up there with names like Curry and Clay Thompson. I mean, when you trade for Derek White, you just know he's going to blossom in to the most, one of the most impactful players in the NBA. He has been an absolute superstar. Everyone keeps saying superstar in his role. I think he just cut it at superstar. That's what Derek White is. All right, where are we going with number four? Number four, Luke Cornett, dog got her. I didn't, dog I got her. I didn't, I mean, they all ended in er, my thing. Yeah, right? no, I, get, yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, when Luke is out there, like most of these bench guys, Good things are happening. You think about it, Chris Stapp's Porzingis goes down. We're all thinking, what are the Celtics going to do? How are they going to fill this role? We're going to have to see Nebiash Keita or, 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 or Xavier Tillman. No, man, Luke's been holding it down all season long. And, Josh, you know what? You know why I picked that little caption right there? Why is that? Because he's got a little bit of dog in him. 